let's go ahead and add the uh, little cloth boundaries here for the other legs. I give myself just a little bit of a gap there so we're not sitting right on top of each other. And wherever you, so long as you click on Geo, uh, the transpose tool will snap to that Geo. So it's real easy to kind of move things in a predictable way. Basically just draw the vector that you want to move your object along. Okay, so at this point, yeah, I think we're just gonna probably do a real quick retop. It's wanting to snap to something there. There we go. Go make it a little bit darker. And we'll just go all the way around. Oops. Fill in that gap with some nice, simple geometry. Tap solo, there it is. Make poly mesh. Uh, and I'm gonna, let's see, I don't know where my, my leg geo is at this point. I'll just stick this thing at the bottom. Go ahead and highlight it. Where's my Z sphere? That's what I'm really looking for. I'm gonna move this down to the bottom and we'll delete that topology. Our face normals are pointing in the wrong direction. So we'll do a flip. Let's do a Q mesh on it. I guess probably could have left it alone because I gotta flip it again. And I'm gonna add uh, an edge loop there. This is definitely a tighter space to work in than the other one. Maybe we need to go a little bit further out so there's there is even less intersection. I'm going to turn on dynamic subdivision on the cloth piece. I'll scoot this leg back a bit. Just trying to figure out how all this stuff is going to fit together. Probably scoot the shin in just a hair. Try to get the, the thickness a little more consistent. So this is super low poly, obviously. I kind of want to use the smooth brush, but the default value is going to be a uh, Z intensity of 100, which will just really hit it too hard. So reducing that down makes it a lot more controllable. So you actually get some pretty predictable behavior. Go ahead and move this in. All right, and having figured this out, the smartest thing here would be to put all this leg stuff on one subtool and just replace the one in the back. So that's what we're gonna do. It's real easy to split this up once it's in the right spot. And again, this trick is only really valid if you don't need the legs to be all that different. Okay, so let's do that real quick. I'm gonna grab this one, drop to the bottom. We'll just move all these to the bottom here. You can see I already connected those two. And then we'll just do a merge down. So now that whole structure, all those different subtools are now on one subtool and we can just, whoops, I do need to duplicate it. And I want to duplicate it with the um, button in the tool menu rather than using control because I do ultimately want this to be separate subtools. And it doesn't really make that much difference if it doesn't line up perfectly with the leg that's there, which I'm going to delete. 
The only thing that really matters is that it fits into the slot that we built for it. it looks like I probably have that piece up there still. So a little bit of a time saver there. Let's see how it looks. Yeah, that's cool. All right, so now we're going to split these. So I'm going to do an auto groups because like right now, this piece here, the way, like you can do a, a split, a group split pretty easily. Split the similar parts, that might work here as well, but I, I'm concerned with these things being on different poly groups because I think it will it'll want to split this up into different, like very different subtools, which is more than I need. So I'm just gonna hit auto groups here uh, and then we can actually do, yeah, that's good. Cause these are, I want these to end up on the same subtool. So I can either mess around with the groups or I can just delete one and then mirror it over. I will mess around with the groups. That's the easiest way to do it. So we'll just go down to the groups menu. Poly groups, mostly just didn't want to go all the way down here. All right, let's see, we'll do a merge similar groups. So I just want this to be on the same subtool when I come all the way back up here and do a group split. We'll hit okay, it's not undoable. And now all of these are their own subtool. Everybody's in the right spot. We'll do that again for this guy. Kind of looks like it's already set up that way. We'll just make sure. So we'll do an auto groups. You can also do a mirror and weld. Oh, look at that. There it's magical. Cool. Anyway, now we can do another group split. We'll hit okay. And they'll maintain their dynamic sub D settings. Oh, that's interesting. Looks like it's off a little bit there, whatever. It's close enough that it will still save us some time. And I don't think we actually want these to be the same because they're so close. But we do, what's going on here? Oh, maybe I turned these back on. Let me just double check I didn't lose my clothy bits. All right, so here's what happened. M my mistake, I had, um, I appended this stuff to the wrong to the wrong geo. I, I had a, another file here loaded up and I, I got confused because I just saw something with a bazillion subtools. So um, I'm gonna go ahead and stop the video. I think everybody probably followed with what I was doing. I'll, I'll go ahead and catch this file up to where it should be and we'll pick it right back up. All right, so now that I've got this stuff set up, there is this top piece there that I'm kind of missing that I, I did like in this. I guess we can go ahead and split these out. I'll just leave them connected for now. This is the only one I really want to pop off because I want to make it, I want to subdivide it. So we'll just leave the other parts leg uh, welded for now. Not welded, but in the same subtool. And let's see, we'll do a little bit of some nudging around. And I'd like for this internal ring to actually poke out a bit. So the easiest way to do that, I just want to change the angle of this so that's going in the other direction. So I'll just do something like this. And we may need to then kind of walk this thing out a little bit further. Just turn our other leg stuff on. Come in here with that low powered smooth, see how that works. So I wasn't thinking about making it the same as this, but it really should be ideally. So let's just add a bevel here. So we get that flat part, we can do increase poly groups. And then I'll go ahead and do the same thing here. We'll just isolate these two rings. Increase poly groups there. And then it's got this nice kind of bend on it. Also a little thinner. So with this, this one feels like it's going this way. So I'm gonna take the bend, kind of do something like that. And in the next video, we will 
catch the other one up to this state and then go ahead and add in some more of that cloth stuff and then we'll start playing with probably live boolean adding some more detail to the other parts of the mesh here